guys, I'm back on Mars, and today I'm going to be talking about EA, corporate companies, and the gaming industry as a whole at this moment. So, first, I'm just going to go over the gaming industry before 2013. 2012, 2011, the years before that were good, good years for gaming. 2013 is when we went downhill. We started seeing companies like EA and Sega with Rome 2. Yeah, all of my um, Creative Assembly people who got Total War Rome 2 at launch. Remember that catastrophe with Day 1 DLC? Well, that only f continued to follow into 2014 when we got Thief. Day 1 DLC... Assassin's Creed Unity with Day 1 DLC, um, and everything else. Of course, EA had to get in on the madness. And I forgot to mention this, but didn't EA and Call of Duty Ghost release their- Yeah, they released their games in late 2013, so I missed a couple. Sorry about that. But EA, with Battlefield 4, released Battlefield 4, and it was a catastrophe. Okay. <laughs> Literally, people on PC, all platforms, were complaining about crashing, performance issues, you know, bugs, glitches in the game so people could get ahead. And, of course, Day 1 DLC. Because people don't want to have to put up with Day 1 DLC. They want to play the game when they get it for $60. $60 should be enough. Because when you pay $50 after the game has released to get the deluxe edition that EA says, well, the deluxe, digital deluxe, digital deluxe, it, they try to con you by adding all these fancy words to the game title in order to say, eh. Well, you sh you should get this because it's digital deluxe, the huge con game, the con game of EA, you know, and it needs to stop right here, right now. The reason why I'm doing this commentary with NBA Live game, NBA Live 15, for that matter, gameplay, is because not only is this an EA game, but this is one of the games that I now have with EA Access, I mean, pff, EA Access, sorry about that, but, um, yeah, this game, I quit it, I quit the game, because I was playing my player, and I couldn't get past the first game, it's not because I suck, it's because bad defense, EA doesn't know a thing about basketball, and, you know, Every time the enemy would charge at my player, my player would fall down on the ground. The enemy would put up a shot. They would even call shooting fouls for no reason, literally. If my guy went down, my guy is the one who got injured. My guy is the one who got charged. That's a charging foul, okay? And they're just like, eh, we don't know what a charging foul is. Like, can you explain that to us? Because the only reason we make these games is to make money. And there's too many threes on the enemy's team. But when I make a freaking shot, I can never shoot it. It's always contested. It's always me just being guarded. Even when I'm wide open half the time, I get perfect releases. I don't get the shot. You know, that's understandable because you're not going to make all the shots. But when I make 95% of the shots... And all of them don't go in? Only 5% of them go in? That is a problem. These are NBA players. These are not freaking middle school players that don't know how to put up the ball. These are 6 foot, 5 foot grown men, okay? These are not 6 year olds. This is an NBA game. You are NBA all stars. Apparently, EA doesn't know this. Same franchises. Battlefield. They've all been dumbed down because of EA. 
Okay. Remember when Battlefield 2 released Battlefield Bad Company? Even Battlefield 1944 and 1945? I, I, I don't know what the game's names are, but I'm pretty close, I reckon. Not trying to be southern, but I'm pretty close. That's all I'm saying. But, you know, this is just going to be a 33-minute commentary. And I'm not just going to talk about EA. I'm going to talk about other companies that have scammed their fans and that have literally ripped off their fans. I'm also going to be talking about Steam because for the longest, Steam didn't have a refund policy. If you got a jacked up game, your money was basically gone. You couldn't get it back. There was no refund policy. I don't even know why Steam allowed this. Steam was just like, eh, we don't have a refund policy. What kind of store is that? If I would have told my parents that they can't get a refund after they bought a dumb game, they would have been freaking livid. Okay? That already spells bad. And the reason why I don't want to get Origin is because it's associated with EA. EA is infamous. People who Patreon Origin... Guys, it's EA. You think EA, just because EA has a refund policy, they're all of a sudden better than Steam? Steam and EA both have their problems. EA loves DLC. Steam doesn't have a refund policy until now. I remember when the refund policy became available. It became available in 2015. Six years after Steam launched, I believe. And all of a sudden, here comes this refund policy that we finally get. And it only says, eh, you can only have games for two hours and then turn them in, which isn't bad. Because in two hours you should say, eh, do I really want this game? Because if you try to play it for more than two hours, that means psychologically you want the game. <sighs> but with EA, I don't trust them. I've lost faith in EA. A lot of people have just lost faith in EA since the beginning. A lot of people say EA in a nutshell, and they are completely correct. EA has the consumers. They know whatever they put out, people are going to buy. Because they're basically the only one. EA is so smart. They've eliminated all of their competition except for one. Except for a few, not except for one. Because there are probably a bunch of people out there who will contest with EA. But competition, that's the main thing that EA has eliminated. And that's the only thing they're good at, is eliminating competition and buying out people. So they don't have to have competition. But other than that, EA, I don't have... If there was other companies in EA, I think the majority of people would probably go buy something else. I Because people on YouTube, they say the reasons why they buy Madden, the reasons why they buy NBA Live, is because they love to play their favorite sports digitally, virtually. They love to create their own characters and play. And who doesn't? People like me who like basketball but can't get it because of the money problems and stuff. Which, not really a lot of money problems. I can get the game, but I want to save my money. I'm not going to go all out. But, <sighs> investing into this YouTube channel and stuff like that. But other than that, EA... EA has just been like, eh, we have a bunch of money. We don't need to invest in the game because we have too much money. And we're just gonna say, let the fans do what they, whatever they want. At the end of the day, we're just gonna get their gratification and everything else. Our first victory, well not our first, but it's not our last. Our victory against EA... In the basketball genre, at least, was when 
2K16 and NBA Live 16 released. 8,000 people got NBA Live 16. Wow. A million people got 2K16. That just shows you that people are starting to rise up to EA. They're starting to be like, and eh, EA, really? You know, I'm not going to get fooled by you again. It's basically like, you start to learn that EA, yeah, you're the only one, but I can go to other people. And when I can go to other people, I'm going to go to other people. In that case, 2K. 2K has won. 2K has won the battle in basketball. What else can EA do? NBA Live, people are downgrading that. And when it releases again, it might even sell worse copies. Because when EA promises us something, that they're going to fix everything, they're going to fix the features, they're going to fix defense, they're going to fix all the glitches and bugs, it doesn't happen. And what happens to the boy who cried wolf? He gets caught and ate up by the wolf. That's what's happening to EA. EA is being like, eh, we're going to fix it, don't worry, we're going to have patches and we're going to sell the DLC so, you know, you guys can get it, but it's cost, it's going to cost you like $15 up front. <sighs> and then they try to scam us with EA Access for Xbox Live Gold membership. I went on there and I was like, let me try this out. Soon as I get in, it says free vault games. I click on that, and what happens? It says $5 monthly at the bottom screen, $30 a year. $5 monthly, you keep paying that, you're not saving money, you're losing money. You're losing more money than the 30 year. $30 a year. So... You know, 5 times 12, obviously 60. So think about that. But don't go out and get $30 a year. You're still spending money. I mean, if you want to keep your money, if you want to save your money, you can get $30 a year. Do whatever you want. The fact of the matter is, EA, you can never get ahead of EA. I remember when my EA access was cancelled due to issues and problems and literally um they were like yeah right you're gonna download this game and get it for free and play it without having EA access it said free with EA access even though it's on your console you don't you don't have the game you technically EA has it but you're just trying it out for as long as you have EA Access. And don't get me wrong, the games that are on EA Access are limited. They are so limited. The titles that EA has released, Need for Speed... <coughs> I'm sorry. Need for Speed, Madden... I'm not really in that category. I like NBA, I like basketball, and I also like Star Wars Battlefront. Reason being is because it's a shooter, and it's also Star Wars and Battlefront, or Battlefield, but it's not Battlefield. I call it Star Wars Battleflop, because, number one, Star Wars Battlefront is so casual. There's no hip fire on the weapons. There's no cover. There's barely any cover. It's not hard because if I had cover, if I could go prone, that game would be the easiest game that I have played in a long time. Call of Duty Black Ops 3. The reason why it was so fun wasn't because it was casual. The reason why it was so fun is because it makes sense and I don't rage about it. Because when I die, I respawn in like 5 seconds. And whenever I press X. In Star Wars Battlefront, you respawn automatically when you press X. There is no... Oh, and, and also, 
Star Wars Battlefront, you respawn in the middle of the whole action half of the time. That leads to spawn killings. People getting spawn killed over and over and over and over and over again. Which leads to frustration, which leads to rage. EA, stop taking advantage of your fans. This is the last time. This is the last time you do this to me. Because now I've gone on alert. <coughs> Dang, my throat is super dry today. But I've gone on alert. And I I'm, not, I'm wising up to your crap. I'm not doing it anymore. Because you're going to jive your way into the fan base. Everybody starts to hate your games. And then you plea not guilty. Well, guilty as charged. I mean, I'm not going to take it to this much extreme. But EA, stop making videos. Stop, no, wait. Stop making videos and stop announcing that you're going to make the games better. Be a good company. Stop stop just making videos and stuff and promising to your community of people who buy your games. Don't think of us as just um what do they call it? Don't think of us as just trees that your money grows off of. Think of us as people who are people just like you. Because EA is run by human beings. What if you were being let down by your company that you spend hundreds of dollars to each year. Because you fully want to support them. And they give you in return a broken game, broken features, I mean, no, lackluster features, and casual stuff. In this case, Star Wars Battlefront. Star Wars Battlefront was a little bit fun, but I bet you if I played a little bit more of that game, like 24 hours of it, I, I would go to sleep. I'm not going to stay up all night. I'm going to fall asleep or I'm going to go to sleep. But if I played more than 24 hours of that thing, I would get bored of it. Because there were the same maps. Um, supremacy. I haven't played all the modes, but, you know, a couple, a week, I would play all those modes within a week or two weeks. And that would be the end of the game. A game is supposed to last you months. In this case, a year. Because EA, you always put out a game every year. So, the game is supposed to last you a couple of months to a year. <coughs> I'm sorry for me coughing. This is probably going to hurt your ears really bad. But, EA, you're supposed to make your games last for a year, for a month, or something like that. And I plead to EA, don't copyright me, don't take this video down, because this is just my mind. This is coming from my mind, and this is also coming from a concerned individual. Because I actually care about the gaming industry. I care about where it's going because I'm a consumer of the gaming industry. I'm giving advice because indie developers are profiting. They're making a bunch of money because they're listening to their fans. Triple A developers, these years have been the worst. Make way for indie developers to rise. <coughs> because EA, it's all about their bottom line. It's all about even companies like Paradox Interactive. They've admitted to releasing, pushing games out the door too early because they have to meet a deadline. And they have to meet their bottom line. And then they come out with, well, well, 
super defensive about their game, you can't be defensive when you put out your broken game and then expect people not to react to it. You can't do that. Either put the game out or don't put it out at all. Put the game out in a footage state or don't put it out at all. Because now from now on, I'm not going to look at a game with any AAA developer. I'm going to look at it before I buy. I'm not going to pre-order. I'm not going to get the game on day one. I'm not doing any of that. Because AAA developers are taking advantage of online. They're taking advantage of the internet because they can post updates online everywhere. Back in two thousand, early 2000s and the 90s, game developers didn't have tip-top shape internet. They couldn't fix everything. Now... They have worldwide internet, which means, you know, we had worldwide internet, but it wasn't that, like, how it is now, basically. It wasn't so advanced. You couldn't put out massive updates. You had to put the game in a finished state and just hope that people liked it. And said EA, to guarantee them money, say, nah, we're gonna make you pay some DLC. Be fair to your fans. Just put yourself in our shoes for a while, even though it doesn't sound that good because, you know, you're not, we're not all rich. We're not, we don't have money and that's why we don't have a lot of money to just trick off like you. You have millions, millions of dollars to trick off and you're just, nah, we're just gonna release the game so we can get a, a ton of money. EA is just like a person who is like, eh, you can't hurt me. I have way too much money or I have way too much strength. And we're basically the people who are getting pushed around and we're tired of it. But you can't do anything to this giant. That's how it is. You know, and this this rant is going to cover the whole video because I don't want to just end the commentary. I want it to go all the way to the end. Because when as soon as this gets published, this video is going to make my day. Because I'll get to look back years from now and hopefully EA would have changed. If EA has changed by then, I'll take this video down. Honestly, I'll take the video down or put it private. But other than that, EA, no. I'm not going to remove this because there are tons of EA rant videos that people put out. I'm not afraid to put this out. It's my opinion. EA fanboys and people who might not agree and say and want to point out that I have a crappy mic. It's my opinion. And I just wanted to get this information out. Because I know YouTube and the internet can be really, really sort of, um, you know, scary place because everybody can know who you are. In this case, it's my YouTube channel. So... Yeah, I want to get this off of my chest. Um, EA, improve your video games, your customer service, your fan base. Because right now, your fan base are just fanboys who want to appeal to you because they think they're going to get something in return. Fanboys, you're not going to get anything. EA is going to screw you over. Well, EA is not... Uh, let's rephrase that. EA is gonna do you dirty like the rest of us. At the end of the day. They're not gonna give you free DLC. They're not gonna give you money unless you're paid to do it. They're not gonna give you anything. 
they're just gonna be like they're just gonna have a smile on their face and shake their head and pat themselves on the back because people they have minions that they don't even have to spend any money they have free minions free people to go out and defend them just think about that for a second put all that fanboy stuff aside and think about well what is this doing like I know I'm helping EA but for what for what cause and be real with yourself don't just be like well I help EA because they put out good content and good games I don't care about DLC I'm not so butthurt like you no it's not about being butthurt it's about caring about your consumer rights yeah consumer rights I just made that word up but it's about caring about being the consumer and knowing when the producer or service provider or yeah producer is taking advantage of you because EA is taking advantage of its fans if EA cared EA would stop its poor business practices EA would stop chucking a game out every year just to appeal just to appeal and try to match up with its contesters it's so like how hard is it just to release a functioning well game you have indie developers who are not triple A who don't have a bunch of money who don't have millions of dollars and still put out good games in a sense Minecraft Minecraft at first was not a triple A title it was an indie game and it grew think about that Bungie with Destiny everybody trusted Bungie and what did Bungie do Bungie turned out like the rest of triple A developers nowadays Bungie partnered up with Activision and people blame Activision no I blame both of them it's time for people, including Bungie, to take responsibility for their actions. And if we're going to condemn them, we can't be like, well, it's Activision's fault. It's both of theirs. Activision could have said, hey, you know, we're not going to we're not going to put this game out together if we have no story and we have like we have no story, no lore, no real content other than shooting people and guns. Just basically no foundation base of the game. The main foundation of the game of it is its gunplay. That's it. Destiny, I stopped playing Destiny. It got so boring because there was literally, and now they're saying, well, get the Taken King. I don't want to get the Taken King. Why should I have to get the Taken King just to play Destiny? Just to play a good story of Destiny? I shouldn't have to do that. This is 2016 now. And I want it to be a really good year for video games. In the video game industry. So, while I kickstart my YouTube channel up again... I wanted to get this off of my mind because I've had it ever since the video game industry was going downhill. I've seen other YouTubers do it and now I'm doing it because I need to get this information out and off my chest. So, yeah. Um, even though we still have more. <laughs> I fooled you guys. This is not the end. I've I'm going to wrap up everything I've been talking about, though. So even though it, it's it been, you know, 
people are saying, well, why would it change? It's only 2016. Well, it was 2012, and the video game industry took a huge loss. So now we can take a huge win. And all we have to do is refuse to buy these games from bad developers. Buy from indie games. Buy from these indie gamers who don't take advantage of people. Who have the good heart just to make good content. And you know, whatever I say is not really going to affect you. You're At the end of the day, you're going to do whatever you want to do. This is my opinion. And some of you guys might call me a hypocrite because Mars, you have EA Access. How are you going to tell us? The reason I got EA Access was because I didn't want to even buy an EA game. So now, for a month... I get to play EA Access and play games and play various stuff like that while having Xbox Live Gold for three months. Just think about that. Well, oh, I want to get an actual EA game. EA Access has literally almost all the EA games that are popular. And I tried out NBA Live. And my decision now, I'm going to get NBA 2K16. That's just the bottom line. And there were certain things why. is because of the fact Dang, I shouldn't be blowing into this mic, but it's because of the fact I'm tired of EA. I'm one of those people who, if sh fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice, shame on you, and I'm tired of it, man. A bunch of people are tired of EA. And I hope you guys liked this 30-minute gameplay slash commentary narration whatever this is going to be called and yeah um don't feel f feel free to subscribe to my youtube channel mars million i mean if you're watching this video you can probably click below on my symbol of orange and Go to my channel, watch my videos, like them, and subscribe. Don't also forget to subscribe because you want more content. Because I will be putting up these videos. I hope you guys enjoy your time. This has been Mars Million. Signing off. Bye.